Okay, thanks a lot. So I'm last, and uh, I'm not talking to you about um, robots, and I'm not talking to you about the Himalayas, and I'm not talking to you about golf and brains. I'm talking to you about money, and I've got to get you excited about economics. So uh, I've got a got a, a task ahead of me. Um, so if I said to you, you've got £200,000 and you can either spend it on a, a drug for a very, very rare condition or you can buy toothbrushes for all the kids in Wales, particularly the kids who are living in socioeconomically deprived areas and they're likely to have to have all their milk teeth extracted under general anaesthetic by the age of four or five, that's a kind of tough question, isn't it? Yeah, and these are the questions. We pay for our health care through taxes and um, increasingly now, uh, in time of recession, the NHS can't do everything for everybody. So I start off by saying that health economics is about how we make difficult choices about resource use. Okay? And widening that, my particular research interest is about public health. And the reason it, uh, it's wider is the fact that um, it's not just the NHS that can affect our health. So where we live, transport, diet, schools, work environment, they all can impact on our health. And so those agencies like local authorities and things, and increasingly in England now, the local authorities are having to take over the public health task. Okay? And they don't know what to do. They do not know how to spend their limited funds. I want to take this chance to acknowledge the research staff I'm very lucky to work with and the PhD students and I'm very pleased that we've managed to keep the last three of our PhD students as research staff. So uh, our, our themes in a way span the lifespan. So we've worked with Judy Hutchings in Incredible Years on parenting programmes, so the costs and the effects of, um, of, of spending public money in different ways. We're working at the moment with the mindfulness researchers looking at mindfulness in schools. Um, we've worked also with, uh, with Bob Woods and, um, and, and Linda Clare. We work on dementia care. How should we spend money in different ways for, for dementia care? And you'll see here some of the um, research sources of funding that we use. And also I've put up here some of our collaborators within the college because I want you to see that health economics spans, it's a way of thinking, it's a way of thinking about resources, the opportunity cost of what we decide to do. If we spend money in one way, public money, then we don't have it anymore to spend in another way. And so it spans the whole life span and it spans really, we work with many groups across the college and within the new schools of um, health sciences and medical sciences. So our research methods are a suite of um, techniques which stem from cost-benefit analysis. This means measuring the costs and the outcomes in different ways. And, you know, it's not accounting. It's actually both a science and an art because we have to say, well, OK, we're going to, to list the costs, but we also need to uh, work out how to describe and measure benefits. But, of course, that's been used extensively in work to support NICE, the National Institute for Health and uh, care excellence in decisions about whether to fund new expensive cancer drugs. But increasingly, if I said to you, well, how should, should we build a new cycle path or a new playground or allow people to go for a walk at lunchtime or play rounders or whatever they're going to do, what, how should we spend money in different ways? Then the, actually that toolbox is not really fully adequate to the, meet the needs. So we're now looking at methods of social return on investment and that's, that's where the health authorities in England or Wales want to say, if we put a pound into um, in school dinners, free school dinners in England for children, if we put a pound into doing that, what are we going to get back over the next year, the next five years, the next ten years? So I hope you can see, and, and I've, I've put here that actually our methods are applicable across a whole range of, of circumstances. So we work very closely with Public Health Wales and just to give you a taste, we looked at their spending on £17 million, pounds, the Minister's money, how is it spent on things like smoking cessation um, phone lines, um, again school dinners, breakfast clubs, where should we be spending money? We've looked at more closely working with, with BCUHB at spending money in different ways on respiratory care. 
pathways. And then um, I asked recently what our next year's piece of work might be, and my draw, jaw, I think, must have dropped when they said, well, I think we'd really like somebody to talk about Wilvernewith, which is the new power sta nuclear power station. What are the health impacts of Wilvernewith? They're big, difficult questions, and we have a go at answering them. So here's a very brief example from, if you like, inception through to translational research of looking at exercise on prescription. Many of you will know what that is, where the GP can give you an exercise on prescription to go down to your local gym and do some exercise. And, and we did the economics on that for, at an all Wales level, showing that it came out with a cost per quality way below what NICE considers as good value for money. Um, and, and then that's now being considered as evidence in the new guidance from, from NICE on physical exercise. So if you see, we've gone right from the, the randomized, cluster randomized controlled trial through to uh, results, publishing papers, and then finally to, um, to influencing policy. So briefly, two outputs I'm really proud of or hope to be proud of in a year or and a half's time. Uh, one is we're running a short course. We had people from the whole of the UK coming over to do a short course at Easter. I'm very grateful to my colleagues helping me run it. Um, the only short course like that in the country. And also now uh, the first book about public health economics in a series of handbooks of health economics. And I want to finish with um, one small slide which is you know we all chip away at research and um, I think it's just a nice memory to go away with today which is the idea that if we're doing small things let's try and do them in a great way thanks